Hello, everyone. Welcome to the, today's virtual health lesson on preventing clogged arteries for cardiovascular health. My name is Irlanda Lopez. I'm a community impact manager at the American Heart Association in Los Angeles. I am so excited to be hosting this live virtual health lesson. I'd like to thank Providence for supporting our work to improve blood pressure control and overall health in Southern California. Heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, and obesity are serious diseases that can have serious consequences for our health. Heart disease continues to be the number one cause of death in the United States, and stroke-related complications are the number one cause of long-term disability. We appreciate you attending today and taking time to prioritize your health. So a couple of housekeeping notes, because we are in a Zoom webinar, your line is muted and your camera disabled. We will be using the chat feature as well as the Zoom poll function to interact with one another. So please feel free to type in your questions and comments into the chat. I see that some of you have already typed into the chat. A lot of you from Los Angeles, love that. So thanks for joining us. Today's presentation is for educational purposes only. We do not offer medical advice. We can provide resources, but specific questions on a diagnosis, medication and treatment should be directed to a doctor. If there are any questions asked in the chat that are specific medical nature, we will have a qualified medical professional follow up with you to answer them. You can also visit our website, www.heart.org, for tools, resources, and information about how to stay healthy during this time. Pulse check time. We want to learn more about your knowledge on today's topic. We're going to start by taking two poll questions now, another poll near the end of the class. So let's get started. The first question. LDL is considered a good cholesterol. I see a lot of you answering. Let me share the results. So 60% of you stated that false. LDL is considered a good cholesterol and 40% of you stated that it is true. We will let you know the correct answer shortly. Now let's get to the second question. When did you get your cholesterol last, uh, checked last? within the last three months, three to six months ago, six to 12 months ago, more than a year ago. Okay, I see a lot of you answering, great. So 27% of you within three, six months ago, two, six to 12 months ago, and 20% of you more than a year ago. Okay, thank you to everyone who answered. So today we will focus on the importance on preventing clogged arteries for cardiovascular health. So blood vessels that carry blood to the brain from the heart are called arteries. Specific arteries supply blood to specific areas of the brain. Blood flows easily through a clear normal artery as displayed on the left picture. 
However, an artery can become clogged or blocked by a black, a fatty substance in the wall of the artery or a blood clot, which the picture on the right shows arteriosclerosis. It's when a plaque, which is a fatty de deposit, builds up in your artery. So these deposits are made up of cholesterol, fatty substances, and other waste products that can clog up the arteries, reduce blood flow, and can lessen oxygen and nutrients reaching the rest of your body. So the arteries that feed the heart can become so clogged the blood flow is reduced, causing chest pain. If a blood clot forms the blocks the artery, a heart attack can occur. If a blood clot blocks an artery, leading it to the brain, a stroke is um, the result. So overall, your total block, your blocked blood flow in your arteries can affect the heart, brain, legs, arms, or kidneys, which can lead to the conditions of a kidney disease, artery disease, stroke, heart attack, coronary heart disease, and all of them are significant for our health. So let's go a little, little bit into how the cholesterol levels can affect the risk of heart disease. So cholesterol can bind to fats and other substances in the blood that build up in the inner walls of the arteries. So high cholesterol is a major risk factor for stroke and heart attack. So high cholesterol can be inherited, but it's often a result of unhealthy lifestyle choices, which can be preventable and treatable. So high cholesterol can increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. So if you're 20, you should check your traditional risk factors, including cholesterol, every four to six years. So if certain factors put you at risk or you already have heart disease, your doctor may ask you to be tested more often. Now, if you're the, the ages between 40 and 75, you're at your, um, ask your doctor to assess your 10-year risk. You should look beyond cholesterol levels alone. The best approach considers overall risk assessment and reduction. You can check your risk with your check change control calculator. In minutes, you'll learn your risk for a heart attack or stroke. So if your risk remains uncertain or, tr or treatment options are unclear, your doctor can perform a coronary artery calcium test. Now, I did see in the chat that someone mentioned that within their family members, there's a high risk of cholesterol. Um, that is something also that I have within my family. So it's very important to be able to go to your uh, primary care doctor and be able to have this conversation, depending on your age, whether it would be your 10-year assessment, your lifetime risk forecasts, but ultimately it's having that conversation with your primary care physician. So let's talk a little bit about how can I find out what my cholesterol numbers are. Next slide, please. So your doctor will order a blood test, which evaluates four types of fat in your body. Your total cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, which is good, your LDL cholesterol, which is considered bad, and your triglycerides, which is the fats in the body. So consuming too many sugar-sweetened beverages increases a person's risk of developing heart disease and high blood pressure. Um, this can harm your teeth, cause joint pain, and may lead to developing diabetes. So the American Heart Association recommends consuming no more than 36 ounces of sugary beverages every week, each week. That's just three cans of Coke. So again, consuming no more than 36 ounces of sugary beverages every each week. That's just three cans of Coke. So 
I say this twice because that's something as I'm talking personally, um, my family member struggles with a lot. I feel that sometimes we don't measure the amount of sugary beverages each week. So make sure that you continue to see the type of sugary drinks that are added with sugar. They can include soda as discussed, but also sugary coffee drinks, energy drinks, sweet tea, fruit cocktail drinks, Gatorade, any sugar, sugary alcohol beverages. I'm not sure if you could put down in the chat what is your advice, but for me, it would definitely be a sugary coffee drink. So that is something where I have to emphasize the type of um, the amount of sugar within my coffee. So the best way to remove sugary drinks from your diet is to replace them with something else. So the best replacement is water. Frappuccinos, Annette, yes, I'm on board with um, the Frappuccinos too, especially the seasonal ones. I am definitely trying to come back, cut back on the seasonal Frappuccinos. So thank you for sharing. So let's speak a little bit about your HDL cholesterol and what is the difference between your LDL cholesterol? So HDL cholesterol is called your good cholesterol. It's a healthy HDL level, which can protect against heart attacks and strokes. So HDL moves cholesterol away from your arteries and back to your liver. Once there, it is processed to be able to eliminate the excess from the body. So HDL can also remove cholesterol from plaques in the arteries. So L LDL, bad cholesterol, is body tissues um, use some of this type of cholesterol to form cells. So it contributes to fatty buildup in arteries. And, but if they use too much, for example, they can ca cause accumulations of fat inside the artery. So added with, uh, with other substances, it can form a plaque, a thick, hard, and greasy deposit. And plaque narrows the arteries and reduces blood flow. This is called um, artery articulosis. So if the plaque buildup ruptures, a blood clot could form at this location or a piece could break off and travel through the bloodstream to cause a heart attack or stroke. So therefore, I know this sounds a lot like of scary things, but if you're going to take one thing from our conversation is LDL is lowering your LDL is better for reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke. So trichylosis uh, are the most common type of fat in your body. They come from food and your body also makes them. So they store excess energy from your diet to keep the excess energy that comes from um, any, um, any unhealthy diet. So combine the combination with high LDL Cholesterol or low HCL, good cholesterol, is linked to fat accumulations within RDL walls. So this increases the risk of having a heart attack and stroke. So it is the most common type of fat in the body. So I want to have more of a good note on this conversation with all of you here. So let's talk about the steps to lowering your risk of heart disease. So your body naturally produces all this LDL, bad cholesterol it needs. So having an unhealthy lifestyle makes your body produce more than it needs. So this is therefore the cause of high LDL cholesterol for most people. So let's talk about the type of behaviors that can correlate negatively to your cholesterol levels, which is unhealthy diets, the lack of physical activity, smoking or exposure to tobacco smoke, being overweight or obese. So an unhealthy diet, um, I will again, will have a, a personal touch with, with all of you. That is definitely something I struggle with. So remember to um, make sure you're not eating too much trans fats or saturated fats that can result in unhealthy cholesterol levels. Um, lack of physical activity, exercise 
helps boost your body's HDL, which is the good cholesterol. So therefore, try to implement um, small activities throughout your daily life. So therefore, you can make sure you mark the activity um, section of your of your day to make sure that you are getting in your steps to reduce your risk of these types of complications that we're discussing. Now, cigarette smoking may lower your level of HDL, the good cholesterol, which you need in your body. So um, we will, in other slides, discuss about the steps on how you're able to um, expo have less exposure to smoking. Now, having a, or being overweight or obese, so having a body max um, index of B your BMI of 30 or greater puts you at the risk of high cholesterol. So it's important to know your numbers with your body mass index to be able to then calculate whether you also find yourself with being overweight, therefore having the higher chance of having high cholesterol. So if there's one thing you will also take from this um, conversation is you can make lifestyle changes to improve your cholesterol. And if, you, if anyone on the chat would like to have sort of their journey on the lifestyle changes, I know for me, it definitely took within one or two um, years to really implement those lifestyle changes permanently. So I'm sure a lot of you have done it faster than me. So I would love to see in the chat how you have implemented um, lifestyle changes or how you will start implementing these lifestyle changes to improve your cholesterol. So now we will discuss how to improve cholesterol and prevent clogged arteries. So nutrition. I feel like this is always a big question, right? What should I eat? Now, you definitely want to have plenty of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, low fat and non fat dairy, fish, skinless poultry, beans, non tropical vegetable oils, nuts, and seeds. A uh, little bit of a tips on when you are. Um, going through, through your groceries throughout the week is to read your food nutrition labels. So even for so-called well, healthier foods, so choosing an item with the lowest amount of sodium, saturated fat, trans fat, and added sugars will definitely be able to keep you within this category of healthy, of a healthier diet. So another tip is beware of sneaky ingredients, for example, sodium, added sugars that we discussed earlier, which may be in your coffee, in your um, tea. So for example, sodium and added sugars go by many different names. So making it, hard, it makes it harder to tell just how much is in there if you don't actually take the time to sometimes read over um, your ingredients, which I know can sometimes be overwhelming, but we will also put in the chat um, different ways to be able to um, read labels when you're grocery shopping. Um, another tip is choose whole grain foods. Look for the word whole grain or whole followed by the grain name um, as the first item in the ingredients list. So including including within that category are tortillas, pasta, and other green foods. So this is all about a healthy diet. Let's go a little bit into what you should definitely limit and or um, not eat. So salt, sodium, as we've been discussing, sugary drinks, sweets, fatty or processed meats, so what should I limit? Foods with a lot of sodium. So for example, um, the foods that can be marked within sweets and sugary drinks, red meats, fatty meats that are not defatted, processed meats, for example, sausages, which I know can definitely be a big struggle for me, salami, whole dairy products, such as whole milk, cream, donuts, cakes, and cookies. So um, as we had a conversation earlier about the Frappuccinos, the cream on the Frappuccinos is also 
another added substance aside from the actual frappuccino itself. Baked goods with saturated and trans fat, such as donuts, cakes, and cookies. Avoid foods that say hydrogenated oils on the ingredient panel. Um, solid fats, such as bread and lard and any type of fried foods. And this is important because anything too much saturated fat can raise your bad LDL cholesterol in your blood, which can increase your risk of heart disease and stroke. A little bit of some cooking tips. Um, I'm definitely on my journey of <laughs> making sure I cook and being able to implement these tools that we're emphasizing here. So if anyone wants to share um, the type of variety of fruits and vegetables, for me, uh, a big a really big um, help has been adding a salad or greens with each main meal that I have. So smaller portions of higher calorie dishes, being able to track how I have each meal within the, throughout my day. And yes, um, Kelia, the um, slides will be available to all of you. And I definitely would love to see any tips that you can provide for me. And I would go over it in, um, when reviewing the slides because I can definitely use from all the tips for cooking. Because I'm sure all of you are definitely better than me. So let's have a conversation about making time to exercise. So aim for 150 minutes per week of moderate intense physical activity of 75 minutes of vigorous exercise. So at the end of the day, every bit helps. Make sure you set goals, um, short-term, long-term, depending on your preference. I definitely prefer um, short-term goals to be able to track it. However, we want you to continue to keep going. Um, sustainability is really key within our organization. So walking more, staying active, um, it all adds up, as I mentioned. So we want to make sure that you make a habit. Let's just discuss a little bit about maintaining a healthy weight. So it is important to maintain a healthy weight, as we discussed earlier, understanding your BMI, knowing your BMI, but maintaining a health a healthier weight with a heart, healthy diet, and regular exercise is going to benefit you in terms of your cholesterol levels. So um, one tip for me that's definitely helped is a food diary. So writing down, as I mentioned earlier, what I eat throughout the day, that I can really track my habits. So I'm not sure if any of you want to share the type of habits. For me, example, when I'm stressed, I tend to snack. So keeping track of writing it down on a paper or a computer or my phone, depending on what's accessible, to be able to see those habits and then uh, really have that food diary to see whether I reach my short-term or long-term goal. So let's talk a little bit about the five steps to quit smoking and vaping. So as I mentioned earlier, remember, take it one step at a time. So set your quit day, take a no smoking or vaping pledge, choose your method for quitting, talk with your doctor, and decide if you will need medicines or other help to successfully quit. Make a plan for your quit day and afterwards, and finally quit tobacco for good on your quit day because ultimately, it can also um, cause your cholesterol levels to rise. And as mentioned earlier, have uh, the other complications within your health. So eliminating tobacco and limiting alcohol is for your best interest. So managing your conditions. So as we discuss sustainability, we want you to work with your healthcare team to build a treatment plan that works best for you to help manage the risk factors like high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Your doctor may prescribe medications to help manage blood sugar, cholesterol, and or blood pressure. It's definitely um, a ongoing track. So as I mentioned about making those uh, managing your conditions, it's a journey. And here at American Heart Association, we are with you in that journey. So let's take a next pulse check. Oh. Now, the first question. 
LDL is considered a good cholesterol. True or false? I'm excited to see your responses. We almost have all participants. Thank you all for um, participating on, in the poll and for the answer, LDL is considered a good cholesterol. 89% of you said false, which you are correct. HDL is considered a good cholesterol. LDL is considered a bad cholesterol. So 89% of you, don't worry, the 11%, like we mentioned, a journey. We'll definitely get there. We'll share the slides and we'll all remember that HDL is considered a good cholesterol. Now let's launch our second. As I mentioned, the sustainability, we definitely want, um, want to make sure that you have a safe space and feel confident within your journey. So this um, whole question is really about your commitment. We almost have all participants and we got 100% um, participants saying that they're, you are all committed to getting your cholesterol checked by your healthcare professional. So I thank you all on starting your journey. Thank you for participating. Now for our call to action, Make sure to take these steps to help you maintain a healthy lifestyle and reduce your heart, your risk of heart disease and stroke. So as we're hitting these points, remember throughout the presentation, um, eat a heart healthy diet, um, keeping track of a diary, depending on your, um, your habits to be able to see perhaps in the day, depending on your mood, your stress levels that you may overeat depending on that time, or if you're a night eater to be able to see and ultimately make a lifestyle change to your or a healthy diet. Um, making time to exercise every little bit counts. So taking those five minute walks, if you're at work, um, going for your 15 minute walk, those were my favorite things, the 15 minute walks. So if you all would like to share how you make time to exercise, that would be really great. Avoiding smoking tobacco and limiting alcohol, as I mentioned, um, take it one step at a time. We're definitely wanting all of you to be able to have that journey of finding ways and tips to avoiding and limiting alcohol. Now, managing your weight, knowing your numbers, your BMI is important. And ultimately, as discussed within sustainability and partnership, work with your healthcare team to manage your conditions. A little bit of more exciting news. Um, oh, Anna, thank you for sharing shorter walks. Like I said, those 15 minutes are definitely my favorite things. Also, I will be taking my 15 minute walk throughout my, um, my work setting. So I'm on board with all of you. Thank you for sharing. And as I mentioned, a little bit more exciting news, please, if you can join our community conversation, it's gonna be great. Um, we will be hosting alongside Providence tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. a free community conversation about food and its impact on health and well-being. Some of these panelists are, these panelists are Providence experts, um, Chief Diversity Officer Daniel Lewis, MD, um, Executive Director of um, Facing Medical Group, 
Beth Sobel, registered nurse, um, the Providence Medical Foundation Director of Behavioral Health, Karen Rentas, and the discussion will be moderated by our own Francis Martinez, the Director of Health Equity with the American Heart Association. I believe um, Nancy provided the register for the Zoom link. So I'm excited for the conversation and I would love to see all of you there to continue this um, movement with healthy eating and definitely how it impacts your health and well-being. Again, another more exciting news. We are going into our next series of virtual health lessons starting October 10th at 12 p.m. There is a link to register in the chat. We will also be sending registration links via email. You can also scan here if you have your phones for these next virtual health lessons. And I want to thank the American Heart Association team and the scenes who helped create this program and a special thank you to Providence, our local supporter in this important hypertension initiative in Southern California. And de definitely thank you for your participation. It's um, always great to be able to see our community engage and wanting to learn more about healthier lifestyles. We would appreciate your feedback about today's health topic. Please take a minute to complete a short survey that will appear when you log out of Zoom. Again, thank you and have a wonderful day.